Hello everybody, Dane here and welcome to my January 2021 reading wrap up. I have two books to talk to you about so far and they are, the first is 15 Minutes French by DK. This is a like learn French week, you're supposed to be able to learn I think in 12 weeks with 15 minutes a day. Now has a list of words and exercises and stuff you can do. Uh, the main thing I took away from this was like car park vocabulary, although even then I don't really remember them and I'd have to look them up. But it was a good test for some vocabulary here and there. Overall I give it like a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think you would be able to speak very much French if you did 15 minutes a day for 12 weeks with this. But it would give you... Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is Soulless by Gail Carragher. I read this as not a buddy read as such, but for a video I'm doing with Susie for our YouTube channel, Lord Literature and Madam Media. Basically, we're swapping TBRs, so I read this after she read it and she's currently reading Jurassic Park, which will be my next read. Overall, I thought it was alright, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. There were some problems, like one was being really pedantic, but she said evolution had designed a sound to be terrifying or whatever, which requires a fundamental misunderstanding of what evolution is. She also did quite a lot of head hopping, so like, Alexia Tarabotti, the main character, would be like, oh, I wonder what, what's his name, Lord Macon is uh, thinking, and then you just jump straight into Lord Macon's head and see what he's thinking, and I'm like, one, that's really jarring, like, it, it, to be fair, I used to do it in my writing as well, but then my editor called me out on it once and now I see it everywhere and it does my head in. Um, but also, it would have been better if we didn't immediately see what he was thinking, because then we'd, you know, we'd have that... We'd have something in common with the character, we wouldn't know, we would just be seeing her side of things. But yeah, overall it was alright, like 3.5 out of 5, I probably won't be carrying on with the series unless there is some particular reason to, but it wasn't terrible, so that's good. Woo! Hello everybody, uh, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is Les Experts en Tout by Anouk Lucard. Uh, she is a French author of uh, Bandes Dessinaires, which are like graphic novels essentially. This is uh, the experts of everything, Le Guide de Savoir Universel, the guides to know everything. And uh, so we have things on like uh, how to comment être à la mode, which means how to be fashionable. Here we go. Aujourd'hui comment être à la mode. And she says de chez nous, which means at our place or to our place uh, so yeah kind of a lot of fun quite satirical great place to like learn French as an adult I would say you could enjoy these as kids or as an adult um, and so that for me makes 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 it definitely worth recommending so I gave this a four out of five okay this is a uh, wrapper all right guys just the one book to update for you today and that is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton um, I, I read this with Susie she was listening to it via audiobook and I read the physical book uh, because we're doing a video for Lord Literature and Madam Media where we swap TBRs and so this happened to be on my sort of TBR and um, she said she'd be up for reading it so we went ahead and did that I would say in the grand scheme of things it's better than the novel of Jaws by Peter Benchley but not as good as the rats by James Herbert it's okay, a uh, reasonable thriller, it's kind of dated in a lot of the science bits uh, these days as well and um, I mean quite often it felt like there was just loads of dialogue but without much happening so that by the time that the action did kick in towards the end I'd lost a bit of interest. Uh, overall I give it a 3.5 out of 5 and I'd read Crichton again um, but I, I don't think this was as good as I was expecting it to be. I think. Um, you know, the movie is kind of iconic, whereas the book, I would say, is not particularly iconic. In fact, it reminded me a bit of reading Dan Brown. Um, so, make of that as you will. Good evening, people of the internet. I have two books to wrap up for you today. The first of those is Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk. So this is basically about a guy who's like the only survivor, or one of the only survivors of this weird death cult. And the book begins with him, he's hijacked a plane and he's flying it on autopilot until the fuel runs out and he's using the plane's black box to share his message. So uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy it, it doesn't really actually focus much on the plane, it fo fo kind of looks back at his life and how he became a sort of accidental messiah. Um, he's not the messiah though, he's just a very naughty boy. Overall, inimitable Palahniuk, I gave it a pretty solid, I'll probably give it a 4.5 out of 5, it's pretty strong. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting to a bit more of Palinic stuff soon. I think I've read about six of his books now. Oh, and a full review coming soon as well. And then we have Asterix Le Gaulois by Argosini and A. Odezo. And this is the first of the Asterix Bond Dessinaires uh, BDs. So they're like the French equivalent of a graphic novel. And uh, it's all in French. I think I have read this story before. Um, but I'm in English. Or I might have seen like a TV show adaptation, etc. of it. But... Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun and improved my French. And I'm going to have to look up, actually, because I used to have 
all of the Asterix movies downloaded and I don't know if I ever watched them. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at that because I, I think I downloaded them in French specifically to improve my French. But yeah, Asterix the Gaulois. I gave this a 5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it and I'll be reading the rest of the Asterix books soon. Alright, just got two books to update you on. The first of those is A Decent Ride by Irvin Welsh. This is the third book in the Juice Terry Lawson series. This uh, is, is very difficult to describe. <laughs> well, I read that it, it won an award for um, comic writing, which I thought is quite a good way of talking about it. I mean, people think of Irvin Welsh and they think of like the gritty heroin addicted realness of uh, train spotting, whereas this one is just much more like just Scottish fun, basically. Uh, yeah, a hurricane ball bag hits uh, Scotland and we start to see what goes on throughout that and we're just watching like this interplay between all these different characters and all this weird sex stuff happening and whatnot. I thought it was great, a possible contender for uh, one of my books of the court, uh, but probably not the book of the year to be honest. Full review coming soon, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And then I read Absent in the Spring by Agatha Christie writing as Mary Westmacott, so as you can tell this is one of her Mary Westmacott books. These were the ones that she wrote under a pseudonym to kind of distance them from her crime novels. People tend to refer to them more as romance books, but I don't think that's necessarily accurate. It's more like contemporary books, but contemporary for the time at which they were written. Uh, this one follows a woman who's sort of traveling through the desert and then she sort of gets stuck waiting for the next leg of her journey. And she gets through all of her pen and it, and then she gets through all of her ink, all of her paper, she finishes reading her books. And she's kind of got nothing to do but to think. And so she starts to think back over her life. And we sort of see her life through these flashbacks. And a really quite interesting little read. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I know a lot of people who are Christie fans don't really rate the Westmacott books, but I found them to be all right so far. And so yeah, why not? I'd recommend it. Uh, I have four books to talk to you about today. So we're gonna start with Javol Common Patat by Didier Levy and Anouk Ricard. This is a French book. Uh, it basically means I fly like a potato, but a potato as in like when you insult somebody by saying, oh, they're a bit of a potato because they're, they're not very clever. Um, and yeah, this, this poor star falls out of the sky, basically. It's designed to help young kids learn to read, and I thought it did a pretty admirable job of that. I mean, I'm young at heart, and I'm learning to read French, so I gave it a 4 out of 5. And then I read Anna and Frogger Thrill Spills and Gooseberries by Anouk Ricard. So this is the same uh, illustrator as the previous book, but it's her writing. This has actually been translated into English, so it's kind of a nice pleasure for me really and I was surprised because uh, normally I read her in French so it was nice to be reading something where it was just so easy to get through the language you know. Uh, a lot of fun I think they did a good job of keeping that sense of humour uh, alive as well like and being true to the original. So I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Then I read The Last Tycoon by F. Scott Fitzgerald so this is uh, his final no novel it's unfinished and so because of that it was kind of a bit of a disappointment because it was basically six chapters and then the rest of the book in spark notes except not even that because there were big chunks missing and stuff so the last 40 pages you know I don't know it just was a very unfulfilling read I gave it a three out of five uh, the bits that were in there there was a lot of cool philosophy and stuff but just because of the fact that so much of it was missing it, it was hard to give it anything more than it. and then I read The Eyes of Heisenberg by Frank Herbert so he is the author of Dune this book basically is set in a world where um, people are like uh, people are using like genetic uh, modification and stuff on uh, babies and there's like a race of superhumans and then different people live different lengths and people are kind of using the threat of time you know as a currency almost or, or the other way around as well so they say you know come and work with us and we'll give, give you an extra 50 years on your life um, but yeah it's just kind of in investigating the ethics of designer babies I guess but in written in 1968 or whatever so an interesting little uh, insight I don't know how relevant it is or how accurate the science was but um, I enjoyed it it was all right it was a 3.5 out of 5 and definitely a lot quicker than June I read it in one day and then we have Asterix Le Gaulois by Argosini and A. Odezo, and this is the first of the Asterix Bond Dessinaires uh, BDs, so they're like the French equivalent of a graphic novel, and uh, it's all in French. I think I have read this story before, um, but I'm in English, or I might have seen like a TV show adaptation, etc. of it, but... Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun and improved my French. And I'm going to have to look up, actually, because I used to have all of the Asterix movies downloaded, and I don't know if I ever watched them. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at that, because I, I think I downloaded them in French specifically to improve my French. 
But yeah, asterisk to go I gave this a five out of uh, I gave this a five out of five. I really enjoyed it, and I'll be reading the rest of the asterisk books soon. And then we have uh, Wonders of Time by John Wyndham, writing as John Benyon. And uh, this is some of his uh, short stories that was originally published in pulp magazines. It's quite a pulpy looking little book as well. Um, again, this was one that was just okay. Uh, it wasn't as good as some of his like more well-known stuff. But again, these were short stories submitted to magazines and stuff. So they were kind of more, um, uh, what's the word? Like, um, what's that word? I think it begins with T. Like transitory, but it's not transitory, like fleeting, I guess. Ephemeral. They're more like ephemeral stories rather than like his great works and stuff. But um, yeah, overall I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It had a good little collection. I think four or five different stories and each of them had something going for them. I mean, as always with any short story collection, there were some that I enjoyed more than others. But as a general rule, I was pretty happy with it. And so uh, yeah, would probably recommend. Hello, it is me and I have one book to update you on. It is The Looney by Spike Milligan. Pretty racist, not gonna lie. I mean, Milligan was kind of known for that. I mean, I did say to Susie in his defense, he was a m all opportunities racist. He's even racist towards the Irish, and he was Irish. Um, but still, pretty uncomfortable, especially when he's dropping like the N bomb and the W word, and like calling Asian, uh, like calling Japanese people, he called them Japs and said they were yellow and stuff. You're like, oh, Spike. I mean, I think he picked up a lot of that when he, because he was he fought in the Second World War in the British Army, so I think he picked up a lot of it from the army. But you know, this was late in his life. When was it? When was it published? First published in 1987, and you've got to say a lot of the stuff in this doesn't really fly for 1987, you know? Um, but other than that, the humour's quite good. Like, there are some great little one-liners in here. Like, let me flick to a random tab. It's either going to be a racist thing or a good one-liner. So, for example, a man gets on a bus and he says, uh, Do you go to Limerick? He said to the conductor. I have to, said the man desperately. The bus goes there. And like lots of little lines like that that made me chuckle. So it's just a shame about the racism. Overall, I couldn't give him above a three because of that. Although I will still keep reading Spike Milligan. Um, he's a weird one because with somebody like Lovecraft, I find it a lot easier to get past the racism because he's been dead for a lot longer. Like Spike is dead, but he hasn't been dead for long. Um, and really, I feel like he should have known better. But there are some other stuff. Like he did a lot of stuff for like um, animal rights and stuff like that. Um, so there's some like nice little animal conservation themes in here. Also, it's just like total absurdness. There's not really a plot. It's just lots of little gags and stuff. But uh, yeah, make of that as you will. I'm not a racist because I read it. I don't think so anyway. I just hate black people. Joke! Joke! Just a couple of books to update you on today, guys. The first one is The Heaven Makers by Frank Herbert. This has um, got people who live for an eternity who can't breed basically in and investigates a bunch of stuff like that. It's all right. To be honest, I wrote in my review for my book blog, it was forgettable even while I was reading it. So I gave it a three out of five and I don't really have too much to say about it here. Uh, other than it has a very raunchy, not safe for YouTube cover, very old school sci-fi. Someone's written 15p on the front cover, which is equivalent to about, what, 20 cents? So yeah. And then I read Pebble in the Sky by Isaac Asimov. Uh, so this was more enjoyable than the Frank Herbert. As you can tell, I've been on a bit of a sci-fi kick recently. Uh, it's just because I have so many of these old uh, thinnish sci-fi books. I'm trying to read through a bunch of them all just to cut down the number of books on my TBR, basically. But Asimov is one of my favorite authors, really. Um, definitely my favorite sci-fi author. Pebble in the Sky is interesting. It's one of the Galactic Empire books and Basically, this guy's walking along in our world and he's put his foot on the pavement, he's lifted his other leg up, and then by the time he's put his other leg back down again, he's 60,000 years in the future. Uh, and people are being like, oh, he's got this weird hair on his face, we need to get rid of that and all this other stuff. So it was quite cool because it kind of shows our own civilization as an alien civilization. Like, there's lots of prejudice towards Earthies, it's like a derogatory term. Uh, and I just thought it was really interesting, uh, as Asimov usually is. Let's have a look, when was this published? 1958, so I think a lot of the ideas in this are quite uh, ahead of their time, really. Overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It wasn't Asimov's best, but it was still pretty good. All right, guys, just the two books to update for you today. The first one I'm going to update is Wreck This Journal by Kerry Smith. As you can see, it has been well and truly wrecked. 
Uh, I didn't do all of the prompts in this, I did a bunch of them. Uh, and then one of them was uh, for, to get someone to hide it and you had to seek it. So Susie put it in like a plastic bag and put it in the cistern of the toilet, which was a great hiding place, but unfortunately the plastic bag did not work. It's since been dried out and it kind of looks like this, but like pages are falling out, all the sticky tabs fell out, so I no longer know which ones I've done and which ones I haven't done. And like, some of the prompts are like to lick this page, which I don't really want to do now. To be honest, I didn't really want to do it in the first place. Like, my thoughts on this, really, it is good. It's like a good way of getting into journaling. I mean, I read online, it's like designed for people who want to journal and don't know how to start. And like, I've been journaling since I was 16, so, uh, you know. But, um, yeah, I think really if, because I'm kind of a completionist and I get obsessed with stuff like this. So if you want to complete like every task in the book, there's a very specific way you'd have to do it, and it's you couldn't do it just flipping in at random. But equally, you couldn't just follow the book through from start to finish. Because you get like where it's like, throw the book in some mud, and then 10 pages later, it's like, put your eye on this page, or whatever. And you're like, oh, I don't want to, because I might get pink eye. So, <laughs> but yeah, I gave it a four out of five. It's pretty cool, and I like the concept, and I'm glad I've finally done a reckless journal, even if I didn't do every prompt. Uh, and then we have Spike Milligan, where have all the bullets gone? This is War Biography Volume 5. So these are like his memoirs of his time during the Second World War. And um, this one really kind of takes place at the end of the war. So um, it's more following him and his mates around as they go and like entertain people by like he played trumpet and guitar and stuff. And like they were in Italy in like 1945, 1946 and stuff. But he talked about Harry Seacombe, who I think later became one of his co-writers on The Goon Show. And overall it was quite amusing, quite entertaining. 3.5 out of 5. Not really great if you want to learn about the war and you want to learn what it was like to be a soldier. But um, entertaining, you know. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. And that is City of Illusions by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a sci-fi novel. I've got to be honest, it was fairly forgettable, although the way although the way it made me feel reminded me of um, Midworld by uh, Adger, uh, ah, Alan Dean Foster, which is one of Todd the Librarian's favourite books, so I feel like he'd probably enjoy this. Uh, this was written pretty much right before she wrote The Left Hand of Darkness, so she was kind of at the height of her powers there. There's some cool like thoughts and stuff and whatnot, um, and some nice little bits of writing, but the plot itself it was fairly forgettable, especially considering I've been reading so much sci-fi recently. But overall, I give it like a a pretty weak 3.5 out of 5, and I will be reading more Ursula K. Le Guin soon. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The World Jones Made by Philip K. Dick. This is science fiction. It's about a guy who can sort of see one year into the future, and it's also set in a sort of science fictional future. And um, we sort of see the effects that it has on society when. Um, you know, when this guy's around. So, I'm gonna read you the blurb, actually, I think. Earth had never before known a dictator like Jones. His body was unremarkable, but with his mind he could see a year into the future. With total accuracy, he could predict exactly what was going to happen to himself and to civilization. In a world ravaged by atomic war and denied the false comfort of absolute belief by its relativist rulers, Jones offered a credulous people the precious gift of total certainty. He swept to power, bloodily and triumphantly. But Jones had a blind spot the huge, mysterious, blob-like drifters that claim floating down from outer space. Through the unconscious agency of these beings, security agent Cusick saw his one chance to rid Jones' world of its tyrannical maker. Hugo award-winning author Philip K. Dick has blended fast action and intelligent speculation in a characteristically superior story of inventive science fiction. And it was superior. I gave this a pretty strong 4 out of 5. Might even have been a 4.25 in my old rating system, but I don't have a little star animation that will that will support that. So uh, yeah, it was really good. I definitely would recommend, especially if you've read Dick before and you've enjoyed his stuff, but actually I think it'd be a decent enough introduction to his works and quite short as well, like 160 pages. Granted, it's in a small edition with very tiny print, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it and would recommend. Hi guys, Dane here, and I've just got one book to update you on today, that is Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Spikowski. This is one of the Witcher novels. Uh, this has actually got to the point at which now it really feels as though the plot is taking off. So, it starts off actually with short story collections, and I preferred those to the first few novels. But we've now done enough of like covering the backstory in the first couple of novels, that by this point, it doesn't feel like there's any time wasted. There's lots of like politics and intrigue going on, lots of questions about morality. And overall, I just found it to be a much more enjoyable book than the other books in the series so far today. 
So I gave it a four out of five. And I feel like my my interest in the uh, Witcher series has been reinvigorated by this one. So I am looking forward to reading some more books in the Witcher series. But all right, guys, just the two books to update you on today. The first of those is The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Uh, this is like a weird sci-fi novel. It's batshit crazy, basically. The best way for me to let you know about this is to read the blurb. Titan, one of the moons of Saturn and a place of delight. Among the inhabitants, Winston Runford, a space traveller caught up in chronosynclastic infundibulum, one of the hazards of intruding into space-time. Malachi Constant, the richest and luckiest man on Earth, now in exile. And what price is riches now? And Sato, a visitor from Tralfamador, a planet in another galaxy, bearing a message from one rim of the universe to the other. Some visitor, some message. So uh, I did enjoy this, I would give this a 4 out of 5, full review coming soon, a bit mental. <laughs> and then I read The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life, uh, How to Stay Cool When You're Feeling the Heat by Tony Hawks. This is like humorous non-fiction, basically Tony Hawks went all the way around Ireland hitchhiking around the, the edge of Ireland with a fridge in tow. And he wrote a book called Round Island with a Fridge. And then this is like, I guess a companion to that, featuring like the life advice that he learned from it. But it does kind of just feel derivative of the original book. However, I did enjoy the original book. Round Island with a Fridge is probably a five out of five. This one for me is a four out of five, but enjoyable and a quick little read. And those are all the books I read in January 2021. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.